Hey, this is Dave from Voidsmith Innovation, and, and today we're going to be doing a video on the steps that we recommend and the steps that we also personally take for cleaning out our liquid de These would be the steps that we recommend, obviously, um, when we summarize the units for storage over the summer until next de-icing season. As we know, salt brine in itself, um, especially the additives that we run, can be very corrosive. Now, it's really not an issue with the, the components of the system itself. I mean, everything that we run is either poly or stainless. But there are some sensitive um, electronics on the unit and some parts of the engine that we want to address before we let them sit all summer. The main point of concern would be um, the electronics, including the servo valve. And what can actually happen is when these units sit, the water evaporates out and leaves the salt behind. And salt water is actually um, a very interesting uh, mixture because the salt can actually creep out of places that the water can't. So it's very important that we flush all the salt water out of the system um, and just make sure that the pump, electronics, the valves, everything are clear of the, of the salt so it doesn't sit in there and, and uh, evaporate out and leave a, a hard solidified uh, chunk of salt in the system. And really there's a lot of different methods that guys swear by. Um, some guys will use salt neutralizers uh, and other products for cleaning up the tank. Honestly, we just use water, Dawn dish soap or some type of other cleaner. Um, as long as we flush the system out really well, it's going to be fine. So the first step that we're going to take is obviously fill the, the tank up with water. Now we rinse out the insides of the tank depending on how clean or dirty they are. It's just a good practice to have, especially if you're going to be using the units uh, for maybe watering going into the summer herbicide applications. But basically what that entails is we just run a garden hose up inside, flush off the sides of the tank. Um, and then we only have about 300 gallons in this 1,000 gallon sprayer. That's going to be plenty to flush the system out. What we're going to do now is we're going to go up there, we're going to throw in a little bit of Dawn um, or whatever you want to use to clean it out. And then we're just going to let the system, the system recirculate for a little bit. So we're going to have the main tank valve open and then you'll see the two inch self fill line on our new model series, actually how we're just going to recirculate it around. We're going to let that run for oh, a good five minutes just to make sure that the pump and everything is cleaned out. And then and then from there, um, we will be pumping it out through the, the boom and the valves and everything else. So why don't we get started on that? Oh yeah. Make a bubble bath. One thing to consider, um, this truck obviously has a hydraulic pump on it, but if you do have the gas pump on your, on your sprayer, now is a really good time to throw in either a stabilizer um, or some kind of fuel treatment additive. I'm a big fan of the Marine Stable. Uh, it's got the ethanol neutralizers in it. Had really good luck with that. Um, just make sure that you put something in there so that the carb doesn't uh, get plugged when it's sitting over the humid months. All right, so we've let the, the tank recirculate for a couple minutes here, and now the way that we're going to clean out our electronic system is by turning on the controller itself in the truck. And what we're going to want to do is flip to manual mode because it knows that we're not moving. Take my hold switch off there. And by going to volume per minute, now this is the exact same method that you would use if you're in a small parking lot um, where you don't want to run an auto and you open up the servo. We're going to open up our valve. Um, which you can't tell right now because my boom sections are actually off and the truck is off. We're going to open our servo up wide open and then we're going to open up our three uh, boom sections. What that's going to do is obviously flush that water that we have through the, the electronics and, and out the boom. It's a good idea to clean out the boom too um, for sitting just so that uh, you don't have any issues coming into the fall when you want to use it again. So we're going to do that here, fire up the truck. On this one, we're going to engage our PTO, and now we'll turn our boom sections on. And you can see opening up the servo, 14 gallons per minute, right at the center boom. I'm not going to turn my side booms on because I'm actually in the shop right now. But um, you, can, you can pump it out this way if you want. To speed things up, we're actually just going to, um, we're going to pump out through the two inch line here on the truck itself just because we're inside. It's a good idea, I did just flip on my three lane boom, that way the, the control valves for the boom sections got cleaned out. But in all honesty, once we pump it out like this, we'll, uh, we'll be good for the, the final steps of the procedure here. 
Okay, so we've finished pumping out the, the contents of the tank. Just a few other steps left here that, uh, that we want to make sure that we, we cover. One is we have our filter element, obviously. Um, usually you don't mess with this a whole lot. If you're getting good flow and everything, your filter's likely fine. But at the end of the season, we do like to clean that out again because anything we do now is going to be a lot easier when we, we get that unexpected snowfall in, in October. So easiest way to do this, just like in the field, you can drain your, your filter body so you don't take a bath with it. Um, and also, we're going to pull the plugs on the pump itself. And they're generally going to be pretty tight. What this is going to do, it's actually going to drain the pump. And we got one more on the bottom here. There we go. Okay, now we got the bottom plug out, and you can see that uh, there's actually quite a bit of quite a bit of product left inside there. It's actually pretty important to do because even if you let your sprayer sit for for a long period of time during the winter, what can happen is actually that water can evaporate out of the pump. We've taken apart quite a few pumps uh, that we've had sent back by customers that were defective, and and what you can actually see is the line where the the salt brine or the was in it and the rest of the pump is actually all salt and that can actually be pretty pretty hard in these seals in there because that salt will get in between the seals and then you have a very very abrasive surface when that pump fires up again so it's a pretty simple process to do we'll even do it during the season if uh, our temps are going to fall really cold and we're not going to be de-icing we might not have enough additive in the system we'll drain all the plumbing on them um, exact same concept as if you were you know draining plumbing in a house or or uh a garden hose so that's about it for this we're going to pull this filter off just need a a pipe wrench to do that and we actually haven't even changed this filter yet or even, or even checked it so we'll be the first time we see what's actually in it and you can see we actually have quite a bit of junk in there <laughs> a lot of that is from not cleaning out the tank when we pop the bulkheads in it um, some of the sealing agent. But you can actually see how much these filters can take. Uh, we've been running this, I don't know, we probably have you know, 5,000 gallons through this truck. And uh, with all that being filtered out, we still didn't have any performance issues. So nice thing about these filters, all you do have to do is wash them out and then uh, install them the exact same way that you took them apart. So we're gonna do that. And then uh, we'll put all this back together here. Now, one of the final steps that I recommend um, if you do have a gasoline engine, make sure that you clean everything up really well, and then we're gonna to wanna to focus on putting some penetrating oil or fluid film, WD-40, something on the engine, just so any residual salt that might be there isn't gonna cause any, any rusting issues with the, the humidity and the oxygen during the, during the summer. One part in particular that we like to focus on is actually at the recoil cover where the flywheel and the block meet. Most of the engine failures that we see are due to that part seizing up. For some reason, um, that main bearing there, or the, the crank bearing, must be very susceptible to getting salt in it when it sits, and then actually it'll lock the entire engine up. Uh, it doesn't hurt to put a little oil in the cylinder, maybe if you like to fog your engines uh, with some fogging oil, that works really well too. But really at the end of the day, um, your equipment will take care of you the way you take care of it. So once we do that to the engine, the last step when we pull it out of the truck is obviously disconnecting the wiring. And that'll just be our 10 pin connector that we have that, uh, that goes from the cab to the electronics here. And make sure you put some dielectric grease on that again. Uh, if there's any corrosion that you might see, use some electrical terminal cleaner and get that taken care of. Dielectric grease, put the caps on. Usually the wiring harness is gonna stay with your truck, so make sure that you wrap that up on your extension harness and, and put it in a safe place. If your controller is not permanently mounted, there are two spots in the, uh, or for the wiring that you're gonna disconnect, and that entire controller can come out of the cab for you. Uh, make sure you put them in a safe place, so you know, you can find them when, uh, when next season comes around. Uh, again, yeah, just washing the, the metal and everything itself. Maybe if you wanna put a little oil or, or um, penetrating oil or fluid film again on the skid, touch up any spots that might be chipped from rust, just anything to, to help increase the longevity of the unit. But that's pretty much it. Um, really, it 
all of this applies to everything that we have. Just make sure that you, you flush water through it, maybe a little bit of soap, get all of the, the valves and everything opened up, and uh, your uh, unit should be ready to go for, for next winter.